Welcome. My name is Stephen Emholt, and I'm campaign manager for Horner 2010. It is my privilege to host this key announcement today for the Horner campaign. Actually, this week has been a significant support week. Well, more so, these past 30 days have been huge for the campaign. As many of you have conveyed in your respective outlets, Tom Horner has momentum. His trajectory is going up every day. This has been evidenced through the public opinion surveys showing Tom Horner as the only gubernatorial candidate to show a gain in every poll since August 31st. Further, it shows Representative Emmer's campaign has fallen back or at best remained static. This makes the race for the governor's office between Tom Horner and Mark Dayton. Today we have 13 former Republican legislators from the Minnesota Senate and House who are announcing their support for Tom Horner, the Independence Party candidate for governor. This endorsement demonstrates, demonstrates two things. Tom Horner has the ability and temperament to lead Minnesota, and his leadership will provide the courage Minnesota needs to move forward on the solutions of high quality <laughs> private sector jobs, education funding and reform, and access to affordable quality health care. Tom Horner will not quit until these issues are resolved on behalf of Minnesotans. These public servants have served Minnesota well. They all share a long history of going above and beyond on behalf of their communities and Minnesota. So to have these legislators come together and stand up in support of Tom Horner is an honor for our campaign. Today their endorsement sends a big message that it is not a wasted vote if you want the most qualified person to lead Minnesota, if you want leadership over extremism, and if you want a governor who both understands and possesses the ability to move Minnesota forward. These lawmakers show courage and boldness in supporting Tom Horner, and in return, they will get a governor that leads with courage and boldness. This year, we anticipated that if people heard Horner's message, if they knew his background as businessman, job creator, and active leader in, in community organizations, and if they knew of his ability to bring people together, Minnesotans, whether they were Republican, Democrat, young or old, would vote for Tom Horner on November 2nd. Our campaign has stayed on track. We have, been, we have been laser focused on the task at hand, and today is proof. These legislators could not sit back and watch what, what is happening to our great state. They have put Minnesota first with their support of Tom Horner. It is my pleasure to announce the legislators who are in attendance today and will address the media, as well as those who were unable to be here today. Peggy Lepic, former state uh, representative, Golden Valley, former chair of the House Higher Education Finance Committee and a member of the Metropolitan Council. Neil Peterson, former state representative, Bloomington, former mayor of Bloomington and a member of the Metropolitan Council. George Pillsbury, longtime friend actually. George, good to see you, thank you for coming. Former state senator from Wyzetta, Lake, Mon Lake Minnetonka area. Bill Belanger, former state senator, Bloomington, 26-year member, 24 as a member of the Senate Tax Committee and ranking member of the Tax Committee for the last 12 of those years and a member of Governor Pawlenty's 21st Century Tax Reform Commission. Dennis Osmond, former state representative from Rosemont and Dave Bishop, former state representative from Rochester. I also want to recognize those legislators who were unable to attend, to attend today but wanted to lend their name and public support to the campaign. Roger Scher, former state representative, Brooklyn Center, member of the Metropolitan Council. David Jennings, former state representative and speaker of the House, Martin and Wadawan counties. Ed Oliver, former state senator from Deep Haven. Lynn Osterman, former state representative, New Hope. Bill Schreiber, Fort's former state representative, Brooklyn Park, former House minority leader. Art Seberg, former state representative, South St. Paul and Rod Searle, former state representative, Wasika, former House Speaker. It speaks volumes that former legislators, the men and women who best understand the leadership that will be needed for Minnesota to succeed in the next four years, are endorsing Horner. It is especially noteworthy that these Republicans have made the decision that Horner is the best position to win in November. I can speak on behalf of Tom and everyone involved in the campaign to say that we are deeply, deeply grateful for their support. Now I'd like to turn to Peggy Lepic, former state representative, Golden Valley. Peggy. Thank you, Stephen. Good afternoon. I am delighted to be here. 
Uh, I'm sure it's no surprise to some of you here, those of you who may have known me when I was in office, that I'm an enthusiastic and early supporter of Tom Horner for governor. Horner is no political neophyte. He knows the system, he knows the people, he knows the issues, and he knows how to bring people together to get the best results out of a very tough situation. He's put together a budget that makes sense and is doable without pandering to political extremes. It involves tax reductions and increases and spending cuts and increases where they are necessary to accomplish the results in line with Minnesota priorities and values. Changes in how government provides services are also part of the mix because demographic shifts and declining revenues demand increased efficiency. As a former chair of the House uh, Higher Education Finance Committee, I'm in full alignment with Horner's vision for, higher e for education. His strong support for pre-K through higher education with targeted reforms ensures that students will benefit from the very best teachers and have access to post-secondary higher education. On other critical issues, Horner has demonstrated his ability to listen, to learn, and to apply good ideas regardless of their origin. I was on the conference committee that created Minnesota Care, and I've been particularly impressed with his thoughtful approach to health care reform. Today, with the left leaning towards single payer and the right towards private pay and charity care, Horner instead proposes to build on what we have while making needed reforms to control costs. That to me is real leadership, and that is what Minnesota needs. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Neil Peterson, the former state representative from Bloomington. Thank you, Vic. Good morning. I think in my opening comments I did remark that Minnesota is in the middle of a hess. And I think when you start thinking about substance and style, it becomes very predictable. We know the substance, the issues. You've been all been talking about it for some time. And I think the styles that are going to come out in November is also very predictable. We need to get to a situation where we have a collaboration to address the, the system that is right now in big trouble, the style. And the style is also going to be important because somehow the legislature needs to begin to cooperate with the governor's office so that we can put collaboration and communication and cooperation in the same bottle and mix it up. Otherwise, we don't get out of the mess. I'm convinced that Tom Horner has those talents. He's smart, he's very honest, and he's very predictable. So I am on board wholly with him and hope that the rest of the state will follow that lead. This is a unique opportunity for Minnesota to address this problem. Good afternoon. Oh, George Pillsbury, I dropped <laughs> the ball. <laughs> Good afternoon. I don't think, I've been around so long, I don't think you have to introduce me, but uh, I happen to, go to the Independence Party Caucus uh, in Maple Grove. Uh, I've been kind of ostracized from the Republican caucuses, and uh, although I was a good card-carrying Republican for many years, and uh, one of the things I actually did when I was there, we changed the name to the Independent Republican Party, so I guess I wanted to see what happened to the independent portion. Anyhow, I met t Tom there, and he immediately made more sense than anybody at that caucus. Uh, I, um, he still makes more sense than any of the alternatives. Uh, Horner has a good cause, grasp of the issues and responsibilities that come being governed. More than any candidate I have worked with, um, Horner understands the needs of Minnesota, and better yet, he knows how to meet them. So I just can't think how important this election is. And I, we have two other opponents, and they're all, I know them well. 
I grew up, my son grew up with the, the, the Democratic candidate, and, and he's a very good hockey goalie. But that's, we need something more than that as a governor. And uh, I, I think I understand Tom Emmer is also a good hockey player. But we, we don't, uh, we really need somebody who can run the state. And um, it's my honor to uh, turn this podium over to um, a senator who we overlapped for two years and then he stayed on and on and knows as much about what uh, uh, has to be done over here. So I uh, want to introduce Bill Belanger, who is the former state senator, also, also from Bloomington. Bill? Thank you, George. Good morning, and it's nice to be back. Minnesota is sadly lagging behind many of the other states in the incentives that we provide uh, entrepreneurs and investors uh, to establish jobs and new businesses. Our sales, uh, our tax revenues are declining and they're going to continue to decline. As the baby boomers start uh, retiring and start paying taxes on pensions rather than taxes on wages. Tom Horner recognizes this problem, and it's a problem that we recognized while I was in the Senate, just didn't do anything about it. And so he is courageous enough to advocate for a, put a greater emphasis on the sales tax. Basically, the current sales tax is a tax on automobiles and large appliances. Fifty-five of these 83 exemptions to the sales tax are for goods and services. Put, putting a more emphasis on the sales tax will provide stability to our tax system, and it's the only proposal out there that will provide stability to the tax system and it will eliminate the feast and, fam sam feast and famines that I experienced for the 26 years that I served in these hallowed halls. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and the former representative from Rochester, Dave Bishop. Thank you, Bill. This is a three-way race. The leader at this time is Mark Dayton. I've known him since I got to the legislature in 1983, and he was working for Governor Perpich. Mark Dayton has succeeded, in my mind, in two things. Being rated the United States' worst senator by Time magazine, and succeeding, succeeded in using his money and family name to defeat the DFL-endorsed candidate, Margaret Kelleher. I don't think those two successes have earned him the right or the uh, vote for governor. He's opposed by a Republican, Tom Emmer. I've been a Republican all my adult life. I started working for Tom Dewey and then Dwight Eisenhower. That's how far I go back with my own Republican. I've been a national, co national convention delegate, an alternate, two different. I can't support Tom Emmer. I know he's a good looking lawyer, has a nice family, but as he says for himself, he's on the right side. He's too far to right for me. And not only that, but I heard him say, when he had made some kind of goofy statement, <coughs> sometimes my mouth isn't connected to my brain. I don't think we can trust somebody who represents the right wing of the party and who has his brain sometimes disconnected from his mouth in his own words. Minnesota needs an experienced CEO who can be a moderate, independent, who can be trusted by both sides of the legislature. Tom Horner fills this bill. 
I spent 14 years in the House of Representatives in the minority. As Don Davis knows, I passed most of my legislation while I was in the minority because I was trusted, a bridge trusted by both sides. I could always work with the DFL in the Senate and always work with the Republicans, sometimes in the majority and sometimes in the minority in the House. I passed over 200 pieces of legislation that way. That's what can be done. Minnesota can't have more gridlock. We're going to get gridlock, I think, in the national, national legislature, and Minnesota's had it really for eight years. We need somebody in the middle who can be trusted and a bridge to both sides, and Tom Horner is that man. It's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, who I served with 18 years, Dennis Osmond. Thank you very much, David. It's a real pleasure to be here this afternoon and to uh, support uh, Tom Horner. You know, f my time in the legislature, I strive uh, for good quality public policy. And uh, to, in order to make that happen, uh, you know that you have to get past the partisan politics that very often uh, attacks the whole system. And uh, Tom Horner is experienced uniter. He uh, unifies people, he can bring people together to get things done. Uh, Horner has a knowledge on issues that the state will have uh, to uh, need or to address specifically or especially in terms of the budget. Um, I just want to really say that it's um, uh, in watching uh, Tom over the years, uh, the quality of the individual, uh, the th sincerity of his advice and of his uh, uh, directions that he's been going over the years is just something I strongly support. I'm in the uh, Horner corner and I want you to um, recognize that uh, he's the type of person that we need to lead the state of Minnesota. I'll turn it back over to Steve. Thank you, Dennis. I want to personally thank Peggy, Neil, George, Bill, Dave, and Dennis for voicing their support today, along with uh, the other former legislators who have lent their support to the campaign. I appreciate the insight and candor these legislators provide to the campaign. I've been working with them for some time, and I and they have aided our momentum. They will bring to the momentum, they will add to that momentum with their recruitment of more former legislators, both Republican and DFL, going forward. It takes guts to endorse an independent thinking governor, and it speaks volumes. They stated that Tom Horner is by far the best qualified person to govern our state. These senators and representatives get it. They understand the condition of our state that uh, our state is in, the problems we face, the deficit, the loss of jobs. They recognize Tom Horner has the vision to get Minnesota back on track, the humility to include everyone in the conversation, and the common sense to do what is right for Minnesota. With that, I'll take a few questions. Steve, or of anybody. Wait a minute. I got a question. How come it's all Republicans here? I bet you could get more retired DFL legislators up here for Horner. That'll be that's the, your next job. That's the next get. job, David. That you bet. Thanks. Question. We've heard a lot about Republicans supporting Tom Horner. Polls suggest that uh, uh, the Horner campaign is drawing more Republicans than, than Democrats. Yet the, the talk is not about Horner from you guys. That's just sort of another Republican. This is an independent thinker. Why are more Democrats not stepping forward by now? I mean, the election is less than a month away. Well, I, I, uh, I feel confident there will be. Uh, this was, a, this was a, a first step that we wanted to take. Uh, we, we, wanted, uh, we, we felt it was important to define the race as between Horner and Dayton and uh, that uh, th these folks are stepping forward because as former Republican legislators they recognize that the race is between Dayton and Horner and it's important to back Horner in that in that contest. Do you worry at all that Democrats might perceive this this might push Democrats to believe what the, some, some leaders are telling them that Horner is just sort of quote another Republican will hear more Republicans supporting Horner? Well we, we, we welcome the attention. Uh, they, you know the right calls us uh, liberal and, the, and the, the liberals call us right and, and uh, so we must be doing something right. No, no I, I think the real answer is a lot of the Democrats are out there and they feel right now if they vote if they vote for Horner uh, they may get Emmer and I get here where you This is the problem we're having on both ways. A lot of Republicans that I know are afraid to vote for Horner because they think then they get Dayton. But even more, many, many Democrats are afraid 
that uh, if they vote for Horner, they'll get Emmer. And the one person the Democrats do not want, and most of us here don't, as nice a guy as he is, we don't want Emmer as our next governor of Minnesota. We don't think he has the capability or the experience. And uh, really, basically, Tom Emmer is just a heck of a nice guy with a very nice wife and uh, some, a lot of children. Senator Pillsbury, what made you feel ostracized by the Republican caucus? Who? You, you said you felt ostracized by the Republican yes. caucus. What made you feel that way? I went to the Orno caucus time and time again. And uh, finally, there was uh, Jenny Tuttle and I were the only two voting for candidates when uh, the first time Plenty was up. Uh, uh, he, his opponent came from Orno one. And so obviously, uh, Plenty got two votes in that caucus that day. And uh, I just felt that they weren't interested. And then, as you know, the, the Republican Party, Chuck Slocum and I had changed the name of the party to the Independent Republican Party and immediately started winning elections. Uh, we, got, we got two U.S. senators elected that year. And then while we were resting, the uh, Republicans, the, the right, changed the name back. They wanted to be, they didn't like being different when they showed up at a convention in Washington or so forth. But anyhow, uh, so I really didn't feel that welcome. And when Getty Tuttle called me up and said, let's go up to the independent, I said, let's do it. And there I met Tom Horner, and he spoke very intelligently about what the state needed. And I realized suddenly, here we at last have somebody who can uh, run our state. And, and more important, bring everybody together. That's what uh, has been, we need, uh, as much as I liked him plenty, I don't think he succeeded in bringing the DFL legislators into his camp or into his ideas. And we need somebody who can uh, not just leave the legislation just hanging out there. It's got to get, to get something done. Thank you, George. Bill. You know, in answer to your question, I've been to a Horner campaign committee meeting, and there were some former DFL legislators there. It's up to the campaign to bring them out whenever they decide to do it. You know what? I think I thought I should have said was, I served with an independent governor, Jesse. Jesse wasn't out a bad governor. He made tremendous appointments. Uh, sure, he was hard to deal with, and he was crazy about unicameral, and, uh, and we know what happened to that. He didn't get where, anyway, even with George's help. But people, uh, Minnesotans should not be afraid of having an independent governor. That, he, he puts him right in the middle. And that's what we've always had the best governors, whether it's Elmer L. Anderson, whether it's, uh, uh, a whole bunch of governors, DFL or Republican, Minnesota should be in the middle. And the man, only candidate we have here that's really in the middle is Horner. And, and we've had experience with an independent. I think Horner will be, be a great governor. I can confirm as well what, what these other two gentlemen have said. I have also talked to former DFL legislators who have... Um, wanted to remain anonymous at that point, um, but they were supporting Horner. I think the concern for them was they wanted assurance that by voting for Horner, they weren't going to be voting for Emmer. Uh, and I tell all my friends who ask, the only way a wasted vote is a vote for someone you don't want elected. Besides getting up today, what are you folks doing to help get Horner elected? Raising money. Yes. Putting up lawn signs. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Got Coming up here. <laughs> Talking to friends. Uh, are, are you are you holding fundraisers, that yes. type of thing? Yeah. All of you? Right. <coughs> Actually, after you asked that question, I think Sally, my, my wife, and I had the first meet and greet uh, event for Tom Horner out of uh, Lake Minnetonka. When was it? Early on in the, in the campaign. And we, uh, much to our surprise, a hundred people showed up. It wasn't a fundraiser. It was a more just to meet Tom 
And uh, since that time, uh, almost everybody who was there uh, has made a contribution. And I don't know whether one of the guys that was there was um, the uh, CEO of Wells Fargo. And if you read his article today in the St. Paul paper, uh, you can see the kind of people that showed up and met Horner for the first time. Dave Dernberger and I drove over to Tim Penny's house in Owatonna for Tom Horner and met the people that were, up, that were all around that area that had, he'd invited in. Do you think it's label, or do you think it's fair to label um, Horner a Durenberger Republican? Well, he's all, he, he says he's always been a Republican. He, he's going to be a, a moderate, whether it's a moderate Democrat or a moderate Republican. You can't have, you can't, you know, in 20 years in the legislature, I couldn't use labels. And I couldn't stand caucuses. I sometimes walked into the DFL caucus. <laughs> the, the, you know, I, I think I think the other answer there is is uh, which is I think Tom's already answered that he is a former Republican. He is now an independent can, can, Independence Party candidate for Minnesota. That's where he's uh, that's where he spent his time and invested uh, everything that he's uh, been able to do on behalf of the state for the last couple of years. And and so he does more or less consider the Republican Party his former party. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, uh, Don, is that uh, these uh, these uh, legislators have also been out doing, uh, have been and will be doing some more surrogate speaking, uh, going to events on behalf of Tom. Uh, so it's it's uh, all the usual campaign work that you uh, like to have your allies perform on your behalf. So if there's uh, no more questions, we'll uh, call the conference at an end. Are you Don? expecting a Another announcement with DFL legislators? Do you we'll, have anything planned? Uh, I, I would say that uh, planned is a strong word, but we are moving that way. We Thank you. We're in a world where no good deed goes unpunished. So some of them are being very, very careful. Speak so, from experience? I speak from experience. <laughs> George Orwell got it right. <laughs> Big Brother Washington. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, hey, why don't we um, why don't we reiterate that thing that you just said to me that you, if you pick the election results today, how do you I, I think that election re the the polls. Or I don't know about polls. I don't I don't get much polls, but I think the election today would result in Dayton in first place, Horner in second place, and Emmer tailing behind. I think Emmer is crashing. Because the more he so talks, the more people realize that his mouth isn't connected to his brain. Pulling out of more and more debates. Yeah, and and not only that, but his budget doesn't make sense for Minnesota. It does. It cuts the wrong things. Dayton's budget never balanced. And are people really afraid of paying the sales tax on clothing? Hell, we. We're surrounded. Also, Horner protects the well, lower classes with um, the first hundred or two hundred dollars not being taxed and things like that in purchases. So yeah. he has made efforts to. Um, That's right. Protect. But think about this: the sales tax on clothing, Ontario, Wisconsin, Iowa, South Dakota, North Dakota. We're surrounded, and we have the Mall of America with no sales tax. Sorry, I jumped in late. Um, you're saying that these folks here that are endorsing Tom Horner or have endorsed him are from a... a just a, just a, a bygone era, a different time uh, in our party when it was about uh, managing, you know, where the only difference between, I think, Republicans and Democrats was, was that the belief was that Republicans could maybe manage state government better. And we're a different party today. We're a different message today. And I think we're at a different time. I appreciate their service in the past, but we're at a different time right now. We need to redesign state government. We need to reprioritize it. And I just think that they're just from the playbook in the past. Is the party leadership and stuff with party kind of rank and file? The NPR poll showed that I think about 60% of Republicans were backing uh, the Emmer campaign, and that you know 40% are not. But I don't find that I don't find that to be a credible number. Everywhere I go across the state and talk with folks, we're hearing you know we're working right now to get out the vote operation. We're getting great response for Emmer. Folks excited and energized. We're going to spend an aggressive amount of, we're going to spend a lot of time over the next 27 days aggressively discussing the connection between Tom Horner and Mark Dayton. I mean, here you have Republican, you have two candidates who both, both voted for Barack Obama, both want Obamacare, both want to raise taxes, and both want to, both want to spend more. That's not a message that appeals, I think, to really any element 
of the Republican Party. And I, and I think at the end of the day, we're going to bring home conservative members. We're going to bring home uh, uh, moderate Republicans. They'll all come home because the true design candidate in this race, the true reform candidate in this race, the only candidate that's in a credible position to win, that's going to lower the size of state government, lower taxes, is Tom Emmer. Are the folks who got up here today, uh, number one, welcome in the Republican Party, and are their views welcome? They're always welcomed in the party, and their views are welcomed in the party. I just think they made the wrong choice on who they should support. They represent, though, a different era in our party. They represent a time when, as I've said, the main difference between the Republicans and Democrats was that Republicans said we can manage state government better. That's not where we are today. We're at a time where we need to reform state government, we need to redesign state government. Um, and I just think that they represent an era that's, that's simply gone at a time when our state is just not operating that same way anymore. So you're saying they're welcome, but their ideas aren't? They're, uh, they're welcome and their, their ideas are welcome. But at the end of the day, uh, they've decided to endorse a candidate and support a candidate that I don't think is in a credible position to win, a candidate that supported and wants Obamacare, that voted for Barack Obama. And when you talk about that message to Republicans and, and, they, see the, and they see the difference and they see the connection between uh, Horner and uh, Horner and Dayton. Uh, we're not going to have any problems with Republicans, and we certainly aren't. I don't certainly believe we're having any right now. So you don't agree with them that it's a Horner-Dayton race? <laughs> I, I think that's uh, that's comical. <laughs> comical. Thanks. <laughs> See you, man. Any others?